Hi, welcome to my Seascape demonstration. I'm Jenny Aitken and I will be, in honour of Patching's Festival this year, talking you through how I construct a big seascape like this with all that subtle but hugely bright lighting. Um, so let's go. I've got my acrylics and my flat brush there, it's a size 6 in Liquitex Freestyle, they're all slightly different across different brands but you can see it's a, a medium flat brush there. And I've got my image turned upside down, it's, it's a bit of a thing for me, I really enjoy working this way, partly two reasons really, I find I can see the negative space better, the shapes between the, the main subjects, um, the real shapes rather than using your interpretive skills, you're just using your observational skills. Um, similarly, I find I can see the tones more accurately, um, which is really important to getting light. So, I'm going to start off getting some of those distant darks in. At this point in any demo, I have to tell you, I start picking any colour in my palette and randomly mixing it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> eventually I get there. I have, um, I have the same colours I use every time. It's a little bit messy, but it gets me there. I've got phalo green, sap green, some kind of cold purple, usually dioxazine, lemon yellow, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, big, big colour that I use, and then plenty of white. So, initially I'm going for those distant shadows on the sea. I'm just going to pop those in as a way of a work from them. Once I've got that tone in, I've got a great big hair on the palette. Once I've got that tone in, it sort of sets the, sets the value range somehow for everything else. All right, a little bit of water, keeping it nice and transparent and flowy. So just, uh, just so loose. And with that colour, which happens to be ultramarine, a little bit of phalo green, a little bit of purple, and an accidental amount of red. You can't really tell there's much red in there. I'm just going to put the bones of the painting in. So here's going to be, there's a lovely bit of colour in the sea there, where the light isn't working its magic so much. I want to make the most of that. Okay, some interesting shaped rocks, but they're not massively, they don't come that far into the painting. This painting is all about that path of light going up, off centre there. Off centre, really important. If you get that light in the middle, it's just not as good a composition, it's not as interesting. Um, just keep it off centre, which is pretty much where it is. And the eye just moves around the painting a little bit better. So I've put some red and sap green into that grey mix now. I just want to stick in some of these greys in the light. I can't quite tell what they are. The way I try and tell what they are is to have a look at the grey, have a look at the tone, describe it in my head. I can see a sort of, actually maybe a purpley grey, so I don't know why I put sap green in there. That slightly warm grey is just about right for a lot of the colour under the light. If you get those warm greys in, your light will look like light, not just like white acrylic sitting on the canvas surface. 
still lots of water in this because it's, it's an underpainting of sorts. I'm just going to get some of this deep tone in and then I'll turn it the right way. So to get my darks, I don't use black, I just use three colours. So I'll go for ultramarine, a bit of red, a bit of sap green. Mix a block colour. Looks about right. I'll add a little bit of water in there and then just get some of those shapes in. Because at this point, I'm just looking at shapes and it's easy to be loose without thinking too hard about drawing. And I don't, I don't want to draw at this stage. If I do that, I'll lose the movement and the atmosphere, or I'll be at risk of doing so. Okay. Those colours in the rocks are much lighter, but I'm just sticking on a vague sense of where they are. Some nice darks down here. Pop those in there. It's quite black and white at the moment. I'll start putting in some of those colours. So how to work out the colours? Well, I have a look and I describe it to myself. As I was saying, it's a sort of grey, greeny blue. So I mix a grey, greeny blue. Bit of phthalo green, bit of the grey that was there anyway. Bit of ultramarine. And if I want to warm that up, I can add just a touch of red there. Cool it down, I can add just a touch more ultramarine. Let's have a look at that. Well that is actually perfect. Now I hold my brush up for this area here. So let's get that on. It's a warmer colour, so if I want to warm up that green, I'll just add a touch of red, a bit more white, so I've got a nice amount of paint, just build up that base there. Red and phthalo green and more white. It's not far off. Somewhere sort of in between the grey and the green. Touch more red in there, I can see. You'll find the more you look, the more you see. And what just once looked like a bit of a black and white image starts to open up with all sorts of different colours you didn't realise were there. There's quite a bit of red in that mix up there. Those colours are going nicely together. Just cut into that rock with it. Soften the edge a little bit. Now up there on the horizon I can tell the colour on my brush is very similar, just a little bit lighter. So let's put it across the whole of that horizon. I find getting light like this to be a, it's a combination of mixing subtle tones, so observational skills, mixing skills, and layering the paint with acrylics anyway. Okay, more white in there. Not using much water now, it's just blending nicely together. A useful brush stroke 
for distance on seas, large bodies of water, is downstrokes, horizontals and downstrokes. If you have angles, that says currents and waves, and you're not going to see strong angles out to sea, you're only going to see verticals and horizontals. Down here, you can go a bit mad with the curves. Keep everything else back here nice and blocky. A bit more red and green and white. Perhaps a few little marks now, a little corner of my flat brush, just to start suggesting some softly lit sparkles. Not the light sparkle, but the kind of secondary light. The light that's bouncing around away from the main player here. I keep adding paint to stop my mix here drying out. Okay, that's a bit light. Let's get some of those dark sea colours in. So ultramarine blue, a bit of phalo green in there, clearly. I'm going to stick a bit of purple into that blue phalo mix because some of these bits of sea are quite dark. A touch of water in there, it's getting a bit gluey. Now the way I'm mixing these acrylics is, is based very much on my experience of using them. It's a mixture of golden acrylics and Dana Rowney System 3. Your acrylics may be different to these. So you'll find your own way of getting the right flow and uh, getting things on at a rate so that they don't dry on you. But this way works well for this mix. All right, let's start getting some lighter colours in there. Actually, let's get those deep greens in first. Stick some um, phalo and a touch of sap green into that blue. A little bit of red because it's a grey green. My brush strokes have changed there. Doing some nice big angled wave strokes. So I want to imply that these are closer. Okay. Stages like this that it's very easy to get a little bit despondent about your painting. You've maybe painted out bits that you weren't supposed to paint out. It all looks very dull. There's nothing going on. With this particular process, you do need to have a little bit of self-belief. <laughs> Believe in the process. So a bit of sap green, a bit of red. There's some real darks down here that I've not quite got those in. I want that sense of deep, dark water. As it comes this way, it gets a bit greyer, a tiny bit lighter. So I always say to people, never allow yourself to become despondent with your painting until the whole canvas is covered. Really until you're finished. Until you're finished you can't see how you're doing anyway. Don't give up halfway, however tempting sometimes. Let's get that sky on. So it's warm, it's a warm sort of grey. So I'll start with white, a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of red. I think there's maybe a touch of sap green in there. It's a bit, a bit muddy and a bit more white than that. Let's 
go with that. Okay, I'm just going to take it over the horizon of the sea so there's no in between edge. Over there, it gets a bit more blue. Pop some blue in there, a bit of purple. the sea, ups and downs, side to side. Some of those clouds, nice purpley shadow. Just pop some of those in. Nice and soft. I don't want hard lined clouds anywhere, detracting from what's going on down here. Let's get these rocks in. So, a bit of red, a bit of blue, and a bit of sap green. And then let's hold it up. A bit more ultramarine in there. A bit more red. And that is good. Some of those lighter colours of rocks down there. When you're painting things like, well, anything really, it helps to think of the nature of the subject you're painting. So when I'm painting the sea, I'm thinking it's a big, ever-moving liquid mass. It affects my brush strokes thinking that. When I'm painting rocks, they're completely still and they're chunky. So my brush stroke changes to reflect that. I'm trying to make a rock colour there. Figure out what it is, more red, green and blue. It's just a bit of warmth in that rock. A bit of granite there. Now I'm going to try and put on some of these distant highlights into the sea. I'm not going to go for pure white. There's hardly any pure white in there and it'll all be slightly tinted anyway. So let's go for a touch of sap green, a touch of cadmium red. And a little bit of ultramarine to knock that highlight back. drag my brush along the background. Wherever I see highlights. I don't want to get rid of every colour underneath. Those underneath colours are essential. Just not everywhere. red. When I say touch red I don't mean that much because that's pink. Touch a red into my white and let's go again but just a little bit more down the center there, the light path. All of this everywhere is secondary light, the light that's bouncing around because of this main path here. Make sure your path is vertical, not angling down, it doesn't work like that. Oh, 
go any further with that. Just going to get some of this lovely blue foam down here. So stick a bit of ultramarine into that white. Perhaps a touch of purple. Okay. And now with the corner of my brush, nice organic kind of strokes. Just put in some wavy bits. It's not far off or over there, so just finish off that little bit of sea with blue and phthalo green in there. And that's what I mean by layering light. You're keeping all the bits of the colours that you've popped in, but as your eye gets more used to what you're seeing in front of you, you're building up that sense of colour and light. I'm seeing the highlights on the sea now that rather than a reflection of the sun, they're just the light of the sky on the water. I'm trying to figure them out by Mixing into that grey and holding my brush up. I'm going to get my slightly softer brush. Still a flat, just a little bit, a little bit softer for some smoother strokes and I'll sneak on some sea surface. Let's go and stick that bluey purple in the sky up there. So, touch of purple, touch of white. I'll do. Just an important bit of blue sky that explains all the light down here. That in. As it comes to the left, it gets a lot whiter, affected by that sun. Through the System 3 flat brush. It's a very nice brush for both oils and acrylics, actually. It applies the paint nice and softly. I'm going to layer on the lightest white, brightest light. It'll be white with a touch of lemon yellow in it. I'll make it work with all those purples and subtle colours going on. And just pop that down the middle. It's a nice opaque brightness. There too. It's very subtly different to the other white, but enough to look a little bit brighter. A few little outlying sparkles around there where the sun's catching the waves. Some of those clouds could do with a little bit of a highlight. So Still quite grey, so I'll pop a bit of purple sap green into my white there. A bit of directional brush strokes for an idea that the sun is beaming down. Okay, and then bring out some of the lights on these rocks. They're a little bit lighter, some of those highlights. A bit of green, a bit of red, and just on the edge of that rock, to bring this, the lighting on them in line with the rest of the painting. Just bringing them out. I've just 
mix this colour. I couldn't see it before. It wasn't, it wasn't singing at me. I feel like my eyes have been trained to spot it through the process of observing and analysing this image. Just starting to bring it out gently. Use a few directional strokes to suggest light again. The occasional blob. There's a bit of wet on the rock catching the light. Final bit. Get my rigger with some some of that light I was using on the clouds will do. Get lots of watery paint on that rigger and then just mess things up a little bit. Bit of noise. Just a touch of painterly freedom really. To the sense of movement, light, things happening. Maybe there's a couple of birds. There's always birds by the sea. So there you go. Some light on the water it should give you an idea of how I construct a painting. Um, painting the underneath and working up from there. Now you'll have more time than me at home, so go for it, enjoy it, and uh, yeah, feel free to share some of your results. Thanks for watching.